I don't like to brag and I don't like to boost, said Peter to Hooper, but speaking of toast and speaking of kitchens and ketchup and cake and kettles and stoves and the stuff people bake, well, I don't like to brag, but I'm telling you, Liz, that speaking of cooks, I'm the best that there is. Why only last Tuesday, when mother was out, I really cooked something worth talking about? You see, I was sitting here, resting my legs, and I happened to pick up a couple of eggs, and I sort of good thinking, it's sort of a shame, that scrambled eggs always test always the same and that's because ever since godness knows when they've always been made from the eggs of a hen just the plain common hen what a dumb thing to use with all of the other fine eggs you could choose and so I decided that Just for a change, it scramble a new kind of egg on the range. Some fine fancy eggs that no other cook cooks, like the eggs of the ruffle necked Salma cooks. A Salma cooks say they should be good, so I went out and found some as quick as I could. And while I was slugging them back to the house, I happened to notice a tisly-topped grouse 
in a tree down the street, and I knew from her looks that her egg and the egg of the Salma Gooks are to mix mighty well, out to taste simply super when scrambled together by Peter T. Hooper. So I took those eggs home and frizzled them up, and I added some sugar to thirds of a cup and a small pinch of pepper and also a pound of horse radish sauce that was sitting around and also some nuts. Then I tasted the stuff and it tasted quite fine, but not fine enough. To make the best scramble that's ever been made, a cook has to hook the best egg ever laid. So I drove to the country, cried rather far out, and I stewed at the birds that were flitting about. I looked with a great care at a mock noodled finch. I looked at beagle baked wild headed grinch, and also I looked at the shade roasting quoll, who was roasting right under a lask a lark's tail. And I looked at the spritz and in flannel wing jay, but I just didn't stop. I kept on my way, cause they didn't have eggs. They weren't late that day. Then suddenly, boy, up the hill short space, birds they were lying all over the place. Great happy gay families with uncles and cousins and all lying fine, strictly fresh eggs by the dozens. Why I had a scrambled more super than super, scrambled eggs super de duper de booper, special deluxe a la Peter de Hooper. I picked out the eggs in a most careful way. I only picked those that I knew were great A. I only took eggs from the very best folds, so I don't take eggs from the triddle holes, cause I knew that the eggs of those fellows who twiddle taste sort of like dust from the inside a bus fiddle. I went for the kind that were mellow and sweet, and the world's sweetest eggs are the eggs of the queen, which is due to those very sweet throat which they eat, and those trout. Well, they are sweet cause they only eat wax, and wax, after all, are the world's sweetest frogs. And the reason they sweet is whenever they lunch, it's always the world's sweetest bees that they munch. And the reason no bees can be sweeter than this, they only eat blossoms of basilnut trees. And those basilnut blossoms are sweeter than sweet. And that's why I napped several eggs from the quid. But I passed up the eggs of a bird called a strudel. Oh, sort of stork, but with fool like a poodle. For they say that the eggs of this kind of stock are goy like glue, and they stick to your fork. And the yolks of this eggs, I am told, taste like fleas. Why the why taste like a very odd bicycle cream? The place I hiked to, the roads that I rambled, to find the best eggs that have ever been scrambled. I hunted new birds along while tangled trails, through gullies and glushes, down dingles and dales. I ripped my way and I crawled at the creep, through a forest of fawns that was forty miles deep, and I mushed through the bush till I found a fine quicker, who 
because the eggs are as big as pinhead, no bigger. Then I went for the eggs of a long legger quang. Now that's quang where she built just a little bit wrong. For her legs are so terrible, terrible long that she has to lay eggs 20 feet in the air and they drop with a plop to the ground from up there. So unless you can catch them before the eggs crash, you haven't got eggs, you've got long leg a lash. Eggs I collected 302, but I needed still more and I suddenly knew that the job was too big for one fellow to do, so I telegraphed north to some friends near Fazur, which is 10 miles or just beyond the North Pole. And they all of them jumped in their Katama side, which is sort of a boat made of sea leopard's height, which they sailed out the sea to go looking for grice, which is sort of a bird which lays eggs on the ice, which they grabbed with a tool which is known as a squatch, cause the eggs are too cold to be touched without watch. And while they were sending those eggs, I got word of a bird that does something that's almost unheard of. It's a hard to believe but this bird called the Pelf lays eggs that are three times as big as herself. How that twelve ever learned such a difficult trick, I never found out, but I found that egg quick. And I managed to get it down out the nest and home to the kitchen along with the rest. But I didn't stop then, cause I knew of some ducks by the name of single file, Zum Zian Sachs, who draw a single file through the mountain of Sams, quite oddly enough, with their eggs on their thumbs. And some fellows in Sams, whom I happen to know, just happened to capture a thousand or so. And they wrapped up their eggs and they mailed them by air, marked special delivery, handled with care. I needed more helpers, and so for assistance, I called up a fellow named Ali Long Distance. And Ali, as soon as he hung up the phone, picked up small basket and started alone to climb the street cracks and the jacks of the stroke to fetch me the egg of empty stroke cocoa. Now these mistaken cocksoles are rather small gods. But this myth token could cause have lots of big paws. They dived from the skies with a wild cackling shrieks, and they chapped at the legs, and they stepped at his chicks with their yammering, clamoring, hammering picks. But Ali, brave Ali, how he fought how this through, and he sent me that egg as I know he would do. For my scrambled egg super de duper de booper de special deluxe a la peter de hooper. In the meanwhile, of course, I was keeping real busy, collecting the eggs of three eyelash tizzy. They are quite hard to reach, so I wrote on the top of a hummicky schnicky mucky schnicky up shop. Then I found a great flock of southwest fessing grains and I guess that I've got something that's wrong with their brains for this kind of a crane when she's clearing her nest will always stand facing previously southwest so to get at those eggs wasn't hard at least I came from behind from Presley northeast And I captured the eggs of Grigli Gractus, who lays them up high 
in a prickly cactus. Then I want for some sifts. They are exactly like sifts. But the sifts live on cliffs and the sifts live in bluffs. And seeing how bluffs are exactly like cliffs, it's my heart telling the sifts from the sifts. But I know that the egg that I got from the bluffs, if it wasn't a sifts from the cliffs, was a sifts. Now I needed the egg of a moth's was. Whose bird poos big cheek scares people to death. And this awful big bird, where the reason they name her, the moose watching sneeze, is cause that's how they tame her. She likes watching moths, sort of quiets her mind. And while she is watching, you sneak up behind and you yank out their egg. So I got one, of course, with the help of some friends and a very fast horse. If you want to get eggs, you can buy at a store. You have to do things never thought of before. Why to get at the egg of one very small dwarf? We had to pray all of a mountain top off. Then I heard of some birds who lay eggs if you please. They taste like the air in the hole in the Swiss cheese. And they're living in big Zinzibar, Zinzibar trees. So I ordered a tree for the job was immense. But I needed those eggs and said hang the expense. I still needed one more and I saved it for last. The egg of the frightful bombastic aghast. And that bird is so mean, and that bird is so fast, that I had to escape on a jillicky just. A fleet-footed beast who can run like a deer, but looks sort of different, you steer him by ear. All through with the searching, all through with the looking, all I had, all I needed, and now for the cooking. I rushed to the kitchen, to the place where it stuck them. I rolled up my sleeves, I unpacked them and cracked them, and shook them and shook them, and 99 pence. Then I mixed in some beans, I used 55 cans. Then I mixed in some ginger, nine prawns of three figs, and parsley, sparsely, just 22 sprigs. Then I added six cinnamon sticks and a clove, and my scramble was ready to go on the stove. And you know how they tasted? They tasted just like, well, they tasted exactly just like like scrambled eggs, super de duper special deluxe a la Peter the Hooper. Hoi. This was a egg full story. I'm not that into much eggs eating, but I really like the story and I'm really happy when you would like it too. So let me know in the comments if you like that story and not and why exactly. And feel free to follow me, RSMR Cuts here on my channel. Subscribe and hit the notification button that you will get the latest news and updates because on every Wednesday and Sunday I will upload a new RSMR video. Thank you so much for listening. And maybe you now are hungry to eat.
add some X.